Hi boys and girls, welcome to the wonderful world of color. Today, remember the last time I told you a trick or two about how to select your colors using the color wheel? So we'll just run over that. But today's lesson objective will be how to use color to enrich your works of art and to create special effects and moods, right? Like for instance, we have this wonderful artist Pablo Picasso, right? Which this is the cubist using color and shapes, right? He went through three distinct periods in painting. When he was sad, he used blue. He went to a blue period, which we call it in art, to, to express his mood. And that's what we're about. Colors are used to express moods. So when Picasso was happy, he was in his pink phase, or what they call it, the rose phase. And when he went through all of that, he just pulled them all together and came up with cubism, right? So we're going to explore all of that. You're going to learn how to create a fantasy landscape. So let's just quickly revise color, and then we can get into our painting, OK? What did I say this is called again? Can you remember? Yes, the color wheel. It tells you everything you want to know about color, how to mix it, how to get your color harmonies to know what matches what. In designing, it's not only the artists that use it. When you're dressing to go out, when you want to design your living room or your bedroom, this wonderful thing that we call the color wheel will tell you everything that you want to know about colors, how to mix and match them. And remember we said the, the color wheel is divided. We're at the top here. All the bright colors, they are called warm colors. They jump out at you in a composition. So if you want to create that type of mood in your painting, you would go for the warm colors. If you want your living room to be warm and friendly, you go for the warm colors here. If you want to be cool, like at the hospitals, do you know that certain buildings only use cool colors, those that use blue like the hospital? Because they don't want the excitement. People are sick. So they go for the cool colors that don't excite you or move around. So you have to make a decision of how, what kind of painting you want. Is it a warm and friendly painting? Is it a cool and easygoing painting that people will just sit down and enjoy. You enjoy the exciting ones too, you know, but you sweep past them a little faster. Because like all the post office, people put the post office in red because it's a place that you want, you need to go to get correspondence, even though we don't use the post office very much, but you have post office red, which we call it, and then versus the hospital and food places. The color red used by artists um, makes your saliva, makes you hungry. Once you view it, try to remember every Chinese and fast food place, Kentucky Fried Chicken, they all have red because according to the scientists, red makes you hungry and you salivate. When they want you to buy, they use the warm colors in the windows, so they jump out at you and you buy. Food, passing, the red sign, you're hungry, you buy. So if you want to find which color complements each other, which one will go best, you go the color that is opposite each other on the color wheel is the one that complements it, exact opposite across. So the complement for yellow going down is violet. The complement for blue going across is orange, and the complement for green going across there is red, directly opposite. Before you start painting, you have to make decisions. What do I want my painting to look like? Is it going to be one that's jumping out at people and they say, oh, wow? Or is it going to be one that is just nice and cool? So you, you select your colors based on that. So you're going to learn now how to mix colors because you can get any color in the world by mixing them with black and white, which they are not classified as colors. They're called neutral. So black and white and gray, 
They are not classified as colors. They are one, according to the scientists, is white is the presence of light, black is the absence of light. Isaac Newton created the color wheel, colors of light, because without light, you can't see colors. So we're going now into mixing. This painting that you use a lot of colors is called a polychromatic painting. Any painting that you use, a lot of colors with its tints and shades, you have what is called a polychromatic painting using many colors, right? Because remember, I told you the last time, according to the scientists, colors have three properties. Hue, H-U-E, which is the name known for color. We say color, but hue is the, prop the scientific name for color, H-U-E. And then we have value, which is the lightness or darkness of a color. You also see it over here, where pink and red is broken down, right? With value, light and dark of a color. And then you have chroma. Chroma is the true intensity of the color. The brilliance, like the brilliance on the color wheel there. Those are in their chromatic, the chroma, their saturated points of color, right? So we're going to learn how to break down that color using the neutrals black and white, because if you have red and you put a little white in red, the color changes. Isn't that so? And what color does it produce? Pink. So pink is a tint, T-I-N-T of red, the tint of red. By adding white to it, you change the chroma, the intensity of it, water it down, and it's now pink, right? And then, if you go to that same red, and you add a little black to it, you get what is called a shade. So like here, where black is added, you, 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 it's now called, we call this one burgundy. So burgundy is a shade of red. Let's quickly walk through some, like yellow. What do you get when you touch, you mix it with white? the color changes, isn't that so? So what happens when you touch it with a little black? These are a little black in it and tone it down like they've been using it here. You know the color that we call that yellow with a little black in it? Gold, that's what we call gold. So gold is in fact a shade. And then we'll do the blue. When you touch some blue with a little white. We call it all sort of names. <laughs> or we put white in blue. Some people say it becomes baby blue. Some people say it becomes sky blue. And then that's a tint, a light shade of it. Baby blue, light blue, sky blue is the tint. And when you put a little black in it to get the shade, right? What do you get? We have several names that we call them. Some people say royal blue. Some people say the Egyptian blue. We have several names that we call them. But once you talk about them, people have an idea that one is the chroma is down, where you put the black and the white. So that's it for tints and shades of a color. So guess what? We're gonna try it now to see if we can paint and to change the mood. Because color is important because whenever you see an object, a person or a thing, the color is what you notice first. So, you're going to choose your favorite shape. Mine 
is the circle because it has no end infinity and i love it because there's no end no point no side to it so i love the circle and then your favorite color which mine here is yellow the sun bright advancing color it jumps out at you right so you're going to choose and remember last week i told you to get your paintbrush to cover your pretty clothes with it can be a t-shirt you don't have to be a coat like mine but you must protect your clothes must you need a paintbrush it doesn't matter what size you need water and you need your favorite color and remember what i said about the primary colors yes when you have the primary colors which they are red blue and yellow and some black and white you get all the other colors in the world so you don't have to go off buying all the other different colors just get your primary colors black and white and you can mix all the other colors in the world so you're we're now back with your color paintbrush and your favorite shape and we're going to try to create a fantasy landscape so you pour whether if you have a palette you pour your color you can shake it up if it's in a bottle like this and pour it into your cup and you must have water from which you're going to wash the brush out once you're going to change the chroma of the color or the value of the color remember that so you have everything now your water your paintbrush your favorite shape and your favorite color ready to go right so fantasy landscape we're painting today so my favorite favorite all-time favorite shape is the circle and I'm gonna put it here because we're doing a landscape so I'm painting in my shape you have to once you have selected your shape you can use your paintbrush to draw your shape your geometric shape and fill it in Know what we call concentric circles circles that are embedded in each other so that's what we're gonna make now with your pa favorite paint so I need some concentric circles here around my circle circles within circles even when you're tying and dying you learn how to make concentric circles circles within each other The further the color gets away from the sun, I'm using it like the sun. So it's closer to the sun, you'll see its intensity. Further away from it, you see the darkness. So tell me what I'm going to do. If I'm going to paint this circle in a shade, what will I do? Add a little black. And remember, always have water to wash your brush out so that you don't contaminate the paint. So I'm touching it with a little black. Do you notice that change in it? If you decide that you want it a little darker, you can. There's also orange in the sun. And I have yellow here. How do I change this color? Yes, you'd add a little red to get orange. when I add the red to the yellow what happens it becomes orange this is the Sun blazing and I'm going to put the land I'm doing it over the sea 
So the sun comes up on the horizon. And it's your fantasy, so you can put anything in. So you normally put on what we call a wash. And then, remember to always wash out your brush. When you look out at sea, there's a black, a dark blue line that you see out there. So you come right across. Don't worry about the sun, we can fix it. You can go back into your orange because we have what is called reflection, right? So when you had this pill here and the sun, you have to make note of that. So you can put in that. So we're going back in. While I did the sea, I was allowing the paint to dry a little. When I used the yellow and the red, we got orange. When, if you notice down here, when I mixed the yellow with the blue, we got some green. So as we learn how to mix colors, we are creating a fantasy landscape. So a fantasy landscape don't have to be like what it is out there where the sky blue and the sea blue. It's your fantasy. A little more red in here into my sun. Just play with it. Have fun. Learn how the brush flows. If you allow if you allow the, the paint to dry out of the brush, it won't flow. So you have to make sure that the brush is saturated with paint each time. You see, look like the sun is scorching. You can change it. Color is a wonderful thing. It, you can change it anytime you want. You go back in here because of reflection. And if you notice, want to use another color over the other color, it mixes. And here you have your fantasy landscape. So you learn how the color mixes together. That when yellow meets red, it becomes orange. And when yellow meets blue, it becomes green. And when red meets blue, it becomes purple, right? Very light shade, depends on how dark you want it and how. So we learn to mix colors by creating a fantasy landscape. And so next time you'll learn how to really go into your own painting. We were just learning to mix colors and how they react with one another today. So happy painting, boys and girls, and see you next time.